Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Hopefully, you're having a great day. We are back with how to create a simulator in Roblox series. And today, we are going to be creating the shop for purchasing brand new items and improving your tools. Of course, as always, if you guys do enjoy this video or it does help you guys out, make sure you smash the like button and also hit the subscribe button if you guys are brand new around here and you want to see more Roblox development videos. Additionally, I do have a Patreon. If you guys would like to support me, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon where if you do support me, you can gain access to all the scripts that I make in this video and the entire game file along with that as well. Well, anyway, with that being said, let's jump right into it. The shop that we're going to be recreating is on the screen right now. That is, of course, from the eating simulator. Now, of course, before we actually do make a shop, what we do need to do is we need to make a way for players to be able to open the shop. So what we're going to do is we are just going to add in a brand new part and we are going to expand this out a little bit like that. Then what we can do is we can make this mostly transparent for right now. We'll just make it half transparent so we can still see it. And then we are going to want to anchor it. And then what I like to to do is I want I like to make a folder inside of the workspace and I just call this script objects shout out to players for that if you guys know what i'm talking about know who i'm talking about that's a specific youtuber once that's done i like to drag the parts into here and we're just going to call this shop open and also did we already anchor this yes okay so it is already anchored let's also make this not collidable eventually we're going to make this completely invisible people won't actually be able to see it but they'll still be touching it. okay so then what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of server script service we're going to create a brand new script and we'll honestly just name this scriptable objects objects and then we are going to say local scriptable objects folder equals workspace find first child scriptable objects and then there we go we now have the folder so then we're going to say scriptable objects folder dot and the object would be shop dot open and we will say touched so anytime a player touches this we're actually going to do something and we're going to connect that to a brand new function and of course in the function we're going to get the part which did touch the actual object then what we want to do is we'll want to also initialize the player service so we're going to say local players equals game get service players and then we actually have to get the player who has touched this so we're going to say local player equals and then we're going to say players get player from character and then the character is actually going to be whoever touched this whatever touched this whatever part touched this the parent so whoever the parent of the part is that did touch this will be the character and then from the character we are going to get the player so then if we do have the player we have to make sure that we do have the player so we're going to say if player then and then we're going to do something because maybe some other object does touch this and they are not actually a player so if we can't find the player then we don't want to do anything but if we do find the player then let's go ahead and do something and honestly all we're going to do is we're is going to say print worked and then let's go ahead and start our game so uh i also made a slight mistake i don't even know where i placed this so let me go back into the workspace and find it okay so i did find it let's click play here so we spawn right here and then when we go in we can see it now says work that's exactly what we wanted sweet for now we can close this because we will come back to this later we actually now have to create the actual shop gui and everything else like that so let's go ahead go inside of here create a brand new screen gui and we are going to say shop gui and then we're going to add a brand new frame to this let's go ahead and move the frame sort of to the center i would say and then we have to enlarge it a little bit and actually theirs is a little bit longer than tall i would say so probably something like that i don't know it, it's decent enough and then also what i like to do to make sure that it's 100 in the middle i say 0 0.5 0 0.5 and then we actually have to do the exact same thing for right here so 0 0.5 five and point five there we go now that will be perfectly centered and additionally with the size we do have to make sure that it is scale and not offset so we can just use the plugin and there we go okay so now the color of this we got to change the background color to some sort of a blue i would say that's sort of the blue that they have it's decent enough and then also we want to add a ui corner to this to make the corners a little bit curved rather than being so square let's say uh 0 0.50 that is way too square let's say 0.15 it's a little bit better but still a little bit less than that 0.10 i think 0.10 actually might be good to go then what we want to do is we want to add in a brand new text button we are going to call this exit button 
and then we will move this over to this corner right here we can make it a little bit smaller i would say like that that's probably pretty good and then the text inside of here is just going to be a capital x so then let's also make sure that the text is scaled there we go the color of it is going to be white but the background color of it is going to be like a red so that's good enough and then the text color of course is a white so that's pretty good like that and then the font is is, I don't know. I'm probably just going to use Gotham for all of it, but I would say Gotham Bold is probably the font that they use for that at X. It looks pretty similar at least. And then also we want to put a UI corner inside of here as well because theirs is a little bit curved too. Let's try 0.5. Yeah, definitely a little bit more curved, so maybe 0.25 instead. That seems a lot better. I think that's pretty good. All right, so now that we have this exit button, we're going to use that for a lot of the other buttons that they have on here. So we're going to copy that, and we're going to rename this to arrow right or um, next page button for now so let's drag that relatively right here i would say i think that's pretty decent the background color of this one is sort of a purplish that might even be good enough and then the text of this is going to be an arrow to the right like that so that looks pretty good and then let's go ahead and duplicate this and move it over slightly so then we're going to say previous page button and the text for this is going to be an arrow pointing to the left. And also the color of this button, since it's going to be on the first page, is going to be a sort of grayish color. That's pretty good like that. And then in between those, we actually have to add a text label. So let's say pages. We'll just name it something simple like that. The background color is going to be non-existent. The text is going to be, of course, scaled. And for right now, it's going to be one slash five. And the text color is going to be a white. The font, of course, is going to be some sort of Gotham. I'd say Gotham bold is pretty good. And then we are going to put it in between here. Let's make it so that that they are actually between there. There we go, center it a little bit, and then hit that with a scale. Let's make sure that everything's scaled. Okay, so we need to scale all three of these ones. So there we go, let's check that out. Okay, everything's scaled perfectly. All right, so we might throw these few things in a folder right here because I feel like the frame is gonna get pretty congested soon and I like to organize and condense things down into folders, but we'll see if we do need to get to that. Uh, we'll see in a minute. The next thing that we are gonna do though is we're actually gonna add a brand new frame and we're gonna name this cat category frame and then what we're going to do is we are going to stretch it a little bit like this what we're going to be doing now is the sort of top buttons that they have and i would say it's sort of something like that i think that's pretty good of course hit it with a scale and then inside of here we are actually going to take any of these buttons it really doesn't matter let's just take the exit button for example and throw that into here so then we also want to throw in a ui grid layout now you could do this with a list layout but i really like the grid layout because it gives more functionality and it's a little bit simpler to work with in my opinion the next thing let's go ahead and rename the exit button to food button and then let's customize this button a little bit so that it works so that it looks perfect let's see if i can find a fry emoji french Okay, so French fry emoji for the text. There we go. The background color of this is uh, a little bit of a lighter red, I would say. Let's just kind of do something like that. That's good enough. Let's duplicate this again. There we go. And now let's rename this time to DNA button. And the text for this is going to be some kind of molecule or something. I don't know. Okay, there's literally a DNA emoji. I did not think that, that was a thing. That's perfect. The background color of this is going to be uh, darkish purple. So that that's good enough for me. And then one more, and we are going to name this ranks button. The text for this is going to be a metal. None of these look exactly the same, but let's just go ahead and use this one. That's good enough. And the background color of this is going to be green. That's pretty good. Okay, cool. So now using the UI grid layout, let's actually adjust this a little bit. So the size, let's do 0.25 right now comma zero comma one comma zero i think that actually should be good that's relatively nice but we do just have to make it uh, a little bit different so what we're doing here is we're basically expanding the x radius of them so let's say three five and we can see that they get made a little bit larger that looks relatively good then what we want to do is we want to change the fill direction from horizontal to vertical and boom there we go now it'll be filled correctly and then also what we want to do next is change the background color of this the transparency to one 
one so that they're completely transparent and that looks pretty decent it looks similar to how they have it and i think that actually looks good now if we hit this with the mobile view we can see it is all perfectly fine looks great and that's perfect okay i actually realized that the buttons are slightly off and um that's okay uh what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the text for all these to be completely blank so let's go ahead and remove the text from all of them we'll start off with the ranks and i'll show you guys exactly what we're gonna do what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a text label we are going to name this icon and we could even make this an image label if we wanted to i'm just using emojis to keep this as simple as possible but we can see that our emojis are different than what their buttons actually look like they're most likely using actual images which we could do the same thing with images it's slightly different but i'm going to continue doing emojis we are going to say background transparency set that to one the actual text of this is just going to be the label so we're going to set that to a ribbon and we're going to make this scaled of course and then what we're going to do is we are going to stretch it to the size of how we want it to be in here. So I would say that that's decent enough. We'll set that. We'll set the positioning right in a second. Actually, we could do it right now. So what we're going to do is we are going to say 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And then we're going to do the same thing here, 0.5, comma, 0, comma, 0.5, comma, 0. There we go. That perfectly centers it. But let's say that we want it to be a little bit up because we want to have the text right below it. So we'll say 0.4. And then let's also set this to 0.4 as well. And then we can put the text right below it. So let's go ahead and copy this. Let's just name it category. That will keep it as simple as possible. Uh, and then we're going to say ranks for this. And then we also need to make the color of the text white, the font of it to Gotham bold there we go and then we can position this down a little bit further so for the position let's try 0 0.7 and point and point 0.7 uh we definitely gonna make it down a little bit lower so 0 0.9 and 0.9 definitely lower and let's also make this smaller as well actually that works fine that actually is oh okay and then we of course have to scale that real fast okay so let's see what they look like on the mobile view uh it looks decent but like obviously they're going to be really small and we can't see it because my monitor is gigantic and this view is very small but it does look scaled and it looks good enough and how it should look so now what we need to do is we need to set the text of this once again to blank and the text of this one to blank as well and then we're just going to duplicate these throw them in their respective categories duplicate them one more time throw them in that one and okay so now we need to do is the text for this one is going to be the dna one just like that and the category text is going to be dna then we can close that close that the category for food is of course going to be food and the icon for this is going to be a french fry so there we go all right there we go now that looks perfect we got the labels we got everything that's good to go and then we can also add the exclamation marks above them but we'll do that at a later time we're not going to do that right now all right so we're pretty much done with the category frame we need to add in another button though and that button is going to be the buy all button so let's move this down a little bit and then what we need to do is just kind of scale it up a little bit i think that's good maybe position it like that i think that's sort of how they have it uh so the background color of it is going to be a green a little bit of a brighter green somewhere around that and then the text inside of it is going to be by all by all with a capital a and the font what is the font okay it is gotham bold it looks a little bit different but i think that's good enough honestly the button really might even be smaller yeah it is definitely smaller it's probably uh probably around that size i would say i think that looks very similar okay we're almost done or kind of uh the next thing that we need to do is we need to make a brand new frame and we're going to rename this to the info frame and we are going to throw that right around here so yeah i think that is kind of where it goes to and then we want to pull it down down to about like uh yeah maybe right there that might be good uh and then we're gonna throw a ui corner inside of this that might even be good enough i think that this does need to be stretched over a little bit more i don't know we'll stretch it out to like right there maybe stretch it like that that's good enough for us and then the background color of it is going to be a darker blue i would say so i think we'll just grab this blue and then make it 
darker like that i think that's actually like maybe exactly what they did and then the corners on this might be a little bit bigger so there we go i think that's relatively good and then we want to add in another frame but this time we're going to add in a scrolling frame to be specific and then i want to line this up precisely so i think that is exactly how they have it lined up most likely and then we uh we'll go i don't know like that far probably bring it down and it's right above these buttons right here so i think that's good then we're going to rename this to is container frame and the background color of this is going to be the exact same background color as the other one so we'll just choose that color there we go now we're going to want to make some adjustments to the scroll bar the color for the scroll bar is about a gray uh it's kind of like a bright white almost, I would say. It's like kind of like that. That's not bad. The thickness of it is, I don't know. Let's try a, let's try a six. Yeah, maybe like a seven. I don't know. We'll try a seven. The scrolling direction should just be a Y. And then another property that we want to change is come down to data. And it's actually the border size pixel. And then we'll change that to zero. And we can see that that really ugly like pixel went away. So there we go. That's nice. And then let's go ahead and copy a UI corner and throw it inside of here and let's set this to 25 so it turns out ui corners actually don't work on scrolling frames that's okay because we sort of do need to make another adjustment for this to look exactly like how they made it what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and delete the scrolling frame let's clone the info frame and then we can just call this background frame um, and then what we're going to do is we are going to copy the size of, we're going to copy the size of the container frame and we are going to make it the same size as, or we're going to make the background frame the same size as that. And then we're going to grab the position of the container frame and we will throw it right onto this. Okay. So there we go. And then additionally, we're going to be having to use Z index slightly. So we want to make the Z index of the container frame two, so that it appears above the background frame. And then with the container frame, I think what we can do is we can set the background to one. So it's completely transparent, right? And then now we have the background frame. So it looks a little bit weird. Don't worry. What we need to do now is we need to adjust the background frame slightly. We want to make the UI corner a little bit less curved. So we'll make that like 10. That's pretty good. And then what we're going to do with the container frame is we are going to shrink it slightly so that it fits inside of this frame right here. That's pretty good. I would say it looks the same as you can see in their picture. They actually sort of do the similar thing where the scroll bar isn't directly on the very far right of the actual frame so it looks pretty similar to how they have it there is a stretched a little bit more to the right i would say so what we could do i don't know if we want to make this larger but i think we should because it seemed pretty small so i think that actually might be good like that and then what we could do is we could put the container frame inside of the background frame but i don't find that to be too necessary so i'm gonna leave it outside of it for now now let's start working with the info frame and adding the necessities inside of here so inside of the info frame what we want to do is is we want to add a viewport frame and then we want to put the viewport frame ah, that actually looks pretty good i don't even think we need to size it up at all i think what we need to do is we want to take the background away from it completely and that's actually good we can just leave that perfectly as is then we want to add a text label to this and we are going to rename this to item name and the font is of course going to be a gotham bold i would say and the text for right now we'll just set this to a placeholder text let's say blueberry pie food and then let's uh let's adjust this a little bit so actually let's set the background color of this to zero for right now so we can see how everything's lined up and where it's positioned at and then i think we should make this the same size as that but a little bit further down or it could be touching i don't think it really matters is the text scaled no it's not so let's scale that there we go and then what we want to do is we want to make the background completely transparent and the text color is going to be white there we go. Okay, so now we actually need to make the stats display and checking out all of their different things that you can buy in their shop. It's going to be a little bit more work than I was expecting, but that's okay. So I can still teach you guys how to do it. It's just slightly more complicated because it's going to have to be a little bit more dynamic, which is cool. And I even do it in my own games. It's just a little bit more advanced, of course. So that's fine. What we're going to do is we make a brand new frame and we're going to call this the stats frame. And then we are going to put it directly below here. 
I would say uh, about that is probably good. I think it's the same size. Maybe honestly, we could stretch everything out because it should be like relatively close to the outside borders right here type of a thing. So we could probably stretch everything out and like enlarge it a little bit. So there we go. We do it with that and then we will stretch that out a little bit larger. I think I wanna make this just a little bit smaller though than everything else, so that's fine like that. All right, that's good enough, I think, for now. So then, the stats frame, what we wanna do is the border, we're gonna set this to zero because we don't want it to have any border at all. And the background color of this is going to be a little bit of a lighter blue than what we have here, but still a little bit darker than what we have on the outside, probably. So that's decent. I think that's fine. We don't have to make it any lighter. Uh, let's duplicate the UI corner that we have on the info frame and put it inside of the stats frame. And honestly, that looks like it's good enough. I don't even think we have to adjust that at all. Then inside of the stats frame, let's insert, let's get, let's copy this item name text label that we have right here and throw that inside of the stats that's frame. Then what we want to do is we want to add a UI list layout for this and let's duplicate this twice so we can see what it looks like. And honestly, we almost don't even have to touch it. I don't think. Okay. Um, what we're going to do is let's rename this item name that we duplicated into the stats frame and name this, uh, stats template. And then the text we're going to set to one of the stats. So it's going to be this 30 max is how I see it. Okay. That looks pretty good. And then we will duplicate this and we will rename this to what their bottom stat is. So just a money icon to represent that and zero. And that looks okay. So then that looks pretty good. But what we want to do is we want to align it to the left and not the center. There we go. And then align this to the left. We actually only have to really change one because we're always going to use one anyway, but that's fine. Okay. So that looks looks pretty good. I like that. Okay. Um, and all of their items only ever have like two ish stats. So we should be able to make this work perfectly fine. I don't think we'll have any issues with this. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete one of the stat template and we'll come back to this in a little bit, but this is good as is. We don't need to do anything else with that. And then we need to, we're just going to duplicate the exit button and drag it into the info frame. Now, if you guys don't realize, I like to duplicate a lot of my things because a lot of the properties that we use from button to button or from text label to text label, they're all a lot of the properties we're just going to keep reusing. We're just going to slightly modify. Like we always want to have text scale enabled. We always want to have similar font or the same font every single time and stuff like that. So that's why I like to duplicate rather than create a brand new fresh one when we can possibly do that. So then let's go ahead and rename this to buy button. And then we're going to want to make this a little bit larger. Let's drag it into the proper positioning. And we're going to say uh, like that. Do we want to make this bigger? I guess we can. I think I'm not exactly sure where we might have went slightly wrong with the sizing. But I think what I want to do is I want to drag this down. I want to drag this down and I want to just make this larger. I think that might be how the sizing is set up on theirs. I could be a little bit off, but that's OK. So the buy button, the background color of this is going to be a green ish like that, but maybe a little bit darker. So there we go. And the text is going to be a buy and that looks pretty good. Okay. So we have the viewport frame, the item name, the stats all inside of here and the buy button. I think we're pretty good on that. Um, so let's go ahead and set the background color of the viewport frame to one so that we can't see the background at all. And then once again, we'll come back to the stats frame later. Next, what we want to do is we want to go inside of the container frame and we want to add a UI grid layout. Oh, one thing that we probably do need to do is yes, that is what we need to do. So we need to scale everything. So let's hit the container with a scale. There we go. Uh, we have to hit the background frame with a scale. There we go. Got to hit the info frame with a scale and then probably everything inside of it. Yes. Yeah. So we need to hit that frame, the item name, and the viewport frame all with a scale and let's see okay and the text inside of the stats frame as well and now let's see how does it look in everything does look scaled but this is messed up a little bit ah okay so i was able to figure out why this is happening i'm not sure the best solution for it but the solution that i did find is to make it slightly slightly smaller so currently we have it as 0.5 what we could do is set it to like 0.49 and see if that fixes it we got to make it a little bit smaller once again so 0.47 okay so 0.47 seems to work for fitting an iphone 4s and not text like dropping uh if we duplicate that twice it's 
it's not bad, I don't think, but you might kind of realize that it's slightly off, like it's slightly further from the bottom than it is from the top. What we could do to also fix that as well, we could adjust the padding on it to like 0.1 or 0.05. Uh, either way, it really just all depends on how much you actually care about that. Um, but I think that seems like a pretty decent fix. I think that looks good on PC and on mobile now. So with that being said, I think we're pretty good for the stash frame and let's go back or the info frame. Let's go back to the container frame. Okay. So in the container frame, we added a brand new grid layout and we're not doing anything with that. We're going to add a brand new text button and we're just going to name this template for right now. That's pretty good enough. Then what we want to do is we want to set the text to nothing inside of here. We want to set the background color to I think the same ish color of that. So we'll do that. Then we want to throw a UI corner inside of it. So we'll just copy this one and throw it inside of there. That looks pretty good, but maybe we'll make it slightly less round. So I think that's good. Then what we want to do is we want to insert, I guess a text label could work. And we're just going to name this text label holder. And the size of it is going to be a one comma zero comma one comma zero. We'll actually make that. We'll scale that down to actually a 0.9 and a 0.9. And then the position of it, we want to perfectly center it. So 0.5 comma 0.5 and then 0.5 comma zero comma 0.5 comma zero. And then, okay, there we go. So now once again, let's get the UI corner, duplicate that, throw that inside of the holder. That looks pretty good. The background color of the holder is going to be a slightly darker blue. It might be the exact same color as that. So there we go. And the text inside of it is going to be blank. Okay, there we go. I think we've got the same setup that they have. That's pretty good. Then what we want to do is inside of the holder, let's actually go ahead and duplicate the item name that we have from the info frame and put that inside of holder. Then let's position the item name a little bit higher up. So a 0.1 and then we want to scale it up slightly. There we go. And we could honestly probably stretch it over to the sides a little bit more. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty similar. That looks pretty good. And then honestly, we could just duplicate the viewport frame that we already made and put that inside of the holder as well. And the background color of this, we want to set that to zero so we can actually see it. And then let's go ahead and enlarge this viewport frame and let's uh, bring the position position of it down a little bit. So we're going to say, let's say 0.25. Then we want to make it smaller, a little bit smaller. Okay. Let's also bring it down a little slightly again to 0.75. Okay. That's pretty good. Then stretch it out a little bit on both sides. I would say like right there. And then the position of it, we want to say, we want to set the X position to 0.5 and comma zero. So that's perfectly centered. And then we're going to set this one to 0.5. And there we go. Now it'll be perfectly centered. And the item name, uh, the text is going to be blueberry pie without the food. Let's make, uh, let's move the item name up a little bit. So maybe we just put it at zero and see how that looks. That looks fine to me. Let's make sure that it's perfectly centered. So 0 0.5 comma zero, 0 0.5 comma zero, 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 zero. There we go. And I think zero, zero was fine. I think that was centered, but I like to just do it like that just to make just to make sure. And then let's look at it in mobile. And okay, we got to adjust it on mobile a little bit, but that looks pretty good. I think that's pretty much how they have it. So then what we want to do is we also want to add in an equipped text. Let's duplicate the item name and then rename it to equipped. And then the text is going to be equipped in all capital. And the color of it is going to be a brighter green. And then the position of it, is going to be at the bottom. So we might be able to set that to one and no. Okay, I think like a 0.9 or 0.8 is where we want it at. So 0.8, I think that's actually where we do want it at, to be honest, because it is a, it is overlapping the food a little bit. So yeah, I think that's actually pretty good. And then the viewport frame, we can set the background of that to one. And yeah, I think that's good. So I'm going to leave that at zero for right this second. And then what we want to do is let's close this template and duplicate it a few times. And now let's go ahead and resize everything. So the cell padding is pretty good. They all want to be right next to each other, but we want to make the size a little bit larger. So I'm going to set it to 0.2 and zero. And well, actually we could just hit this with a scale and that might work. No. Okay. I guess it actually doesn't work. Let's say uh, 0.2 comma zero comma 0.5 comma zero. I don't know. Something like that. Okay. That's definitely off a little bit. Let's hit this with a 0.1. That's a little bit better. 0.15. That might be decent. And this could be a three, five. How about a three, two? 
that's that's pretty good let's duplicate this again to see how it looks and okay that's not bad but we want to be slightly smaller and i'll show you guys in a second why the padding seems all fine i don't think we have to adjust the padding at all it seems like they have it as default to be honest i think for the size though we want to make it four not four five and i think that's actually perfect i think that's exactly how they have the reason that we're doing it like this is because i learned one tip that i saw on the dev forums is that you always want the players to know that there's still things below so that players understand that they have to scroll so that's why we leave a slight little view of the boxes below because we want people to say oh okay there's still things down here so we understand we can keep scrolling down you might be thinking well they'll obviously see the scroll bar which yes that is true but at the same time if they do see something that's another indicator that they can scroll further down now additionally let's hit this with a mobile view and see how it looks it does look a little bit off but it does look scaled and it does look proper and that's exactly what we wanted i actually didn't even realize but we actually have to scale some of the currency stuff so i'll fix that real quick uh we go to the purchase and we readjust this to the right view hit that with a scale and hit that purchase with a scale and then i think everything is good to go yes okay everything does look good we can close the currency label uh but yeah so now the shop does look pretty good we've pretty much got all the components and everything set up that we need go back to the container frame and delete all of the templates except for one and then go inside of holder go inside of equipped and we're actually just going to set the visibility of this to false so that we cannot see that so then when we script it what we're going to do is we're going to say if this item is equipped then set equipped to be visible and i'll show you guys that when we actually do script it for the stats frame we can only we only need one template so we'll just leave it like that and considering this video is already 39 minutes long i am going to leave the episode there um what i will do is also let me actually just make this background transparency zero and set the template equipped to actually the visibility to be true if you're gonna go watch the next episode after this you don't have to set the visibility to true or anything you can leave it as is because i'll reset on the next episode i just don't want to forget that when i come back and record the next episode to forget about any of these components that's why i'm making them completely visible for myself but on the next episode we're going to be scripting every single aspect of this and we'll actually be going much deeper into that on the next episode so what we can do for right now is we can enable false so that we don't have to see that so anyway ladies and gentlemen hopefully the video did help you guys out if it did make sure you smash the like button and also hit the subscribe button and turn those post notifications on if you guys want to get notified when i upload more roblox development videos additionally i do have a patreon if you guys would like to support me or gain access to all the scripts or even the game file that i did make in this video there's a link down below in the description to the patreon go check it out and support me anyway with that being said i'll see you guys in the next episode